Hello, James here, and welcome to a visit to the professor's office. So what is this all about? So you know that I'm a university professor. I'm an associate professor of communication at Zaid University in Dubai. You probably know that I teach public speaking because you've probably listened to some of my public speaking podcasts. You might know that I am a podcaster. I do some stuff on The James Cast. Google it, you'll find it, as well as Podaholics. There's a nice overlap. The difference, people often say, James, you're publishing work on Podaholics, and you know, that's that's PowerWorks with Glenn Power, Tech Talk with Andrew Thomas, Doc Talk with Dr. Jenna, Colin Thomas doing the DIY stuff, catching up with just cool people that I run into. And then there are similar shows on the James cast. What's the difference? So the reality is the James cast often has pre-roll. So just, you know, we, we sat down in front of the mic, so, hey, how's it going? You know, we, we literally, and that, and that, by the way, is my, my Mark Lloyd, uh, hey, how's it going? Mark Lloyd here, and uh, we're going to talk about... <laughs> uh, okay, look Mark Lloyd up, Dubai I 103.8 FM. Love Mark. But anyway, this, this is all about a, a small visit inside my office. Think of it as... Virtual office hours and lessons from the professor. First thing, I'm in this room, and as you can see, I'm, I'm dressed appropriately. This is how I go to class. Thankfully, we're virtual, so I, I can do that. But hold on a second, I dress like this all the time anyway. So, And all I want to do is just really have a little chat and offer you an opportunity to get involved. Drop me a line if you need to, james at thejamescast.com. I'd love to answer questions if you've got them. But really, just it's, it's just a checkup. It's just a check-in. You know, what's going on? What's happening in the office? So what have I been teaching? What? And it's, it's not so much, you know, oh, okay, I'm going to talk about intercultural communication. I'm going to talk about media law today. We're going to talk about uh, ethics. Oh, we're going to talk about media criticism. Oh, we're going to talk public speaking. Yeah, I'm teaching five courses. And four preps, five courses. I'm not complaining because, you know, all dues to my wife and everyone else who teaches in elementary school and high school. I mean, I don't have it that hard. But five courses at a university level, it makes it a little bit harder to do some research and a little bit harder to be writing. But we still manage to get podcasts up. We still manage to, to do what we have to do. So the point of all of this is... In the process of teaching my classes online, doing some podcasting, doing some research, talking to people, you just notice things. And I thought, let's have a little checkup. Let's have a little chat. Let's, let's throw them out there and, and get them going and get, and get us thinking about them. Because I think many of the, the great lessons that we get from what we do in the day are just kind of lost because they're, they're just not... The, you know, not on the PowerPoint. They're not on, on Adobe Spark. So, so this is a great thing. So I'm, I am teaching online. I'm teaching my classes in Zoom. Loving it. Taught it last semester in Zoom as well, and, and it really does work. And for me, a lot of people say, oh, what's your strategy? What pedagogical approach are you using? How are you making it work? Look, blended lecture, some participation. It's, it's a lot of me talking and, and throwing materials up and asking students, hey, what do you think? How's this grabbing you? How how are you able to provide the examples that actually bring these ideas to life? But I, I tend to use, I'm not using PowerPoint, I'm not using Keynote, but I'm using Adobe Spark. And Richard Kaywood, Second Light Photography, go look that dude up. Richard Kaywood put me on to Adobe last semester and he said, James, just start using it. And so I've been using it for all my notes and it's spectacular, truly makes every product that you're doing just look better. It's great for posts up on Instagram and Facebook or making flyers and also making these web projects that what I really love about it, and this is the best part, how many times have you produced a PowerPoint or a keynote, posted it up into Blackboard, posted it up into Dropbox, wherever, and then you realize, oh, there's a spelling error there or that example, I want to use a different one or that Happens to me all the time. I mean, I was in my, in, the, in my spark today and I'm looking, I'm going, what'd you do? Dude, what? 
So the beauty is you go back to the OOB Spark, make the correction, push update, it changes the link where I've placed it in my Blackboard files. If people have downloaded it, changes the link for them. One stop shop and, and it looks good. So in true Kwood style, I look like the bomb. I mean, maybe you know that could be taken the wrong way, but I look really good. I look really good. So the the lesson there, obviously, is sometimes you gotta try using other devices. Sometimes you gotta try using other things. And I think that becomes really important. Something I learned today, and I'm I'm kind of a mean person in this sense. You're not in my class when I give the quiz, or I like, I like to do little quizzes just to keep us keep our minds rolling on. Okay, am I, am I thinking about some of this material, and are the key terms and how they relate to things? Has it resonated? Has it stuck? You know, and I'm, in my class, you're in the class, you do the quiz. You're not in the class, you miss the quiz. Oh, I, I had a doctor's appointment. Sorry. Oh, my Wi-Fi's out. Sorry. You're not there, there's no excuse, you missed it, you're out. And to the, I've, I've noticed something is that my students really don't read the syllabus. And I mean, for, okay, so forget about all the, you know, the, 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 the boilerplate in the syllabus, but I have a weekly outline with quite a bit of detail on what we're gonna cover, where we're gonna go look, and, and information such as all of the reasons that you can't use for an excuse for your quiz. They don't look at it. People, I spent the time doing this thing. I've had to upload it multiple places. I've had to create it. Do me the decency of actually reading it. And, and you know, which is the second point, because I got a second point t today from a student as well. And the second point was, sir, I don't get it, is what the student said. And I kind of listened to that and went, what don't you get? I don't get everything. So my question was, did you read the notes? Have you looked at anything? Have, and, and instantly in my mind, I'm thinking, not in the class, not in the class, not. As in physically there on the Zoom, the, the name is there. Physically somewhere else. And then jump back in because someone probably WhatsApp and said, hey, you better be here because the dude's given us all sorts of information. At which point, I don't get it. So. Second point that I'm, I'm kind of trying to embed and ingrain with my students is, look, I've done everything I can to make sure my internet is, is rocking. I am not just firing on a recording of me in my teaching zone that you can just turn on and, hello, I'm there, and I can go sit back and, and you know, have a, a Dr. Love margarita. In my class, I am in my class. So, for instance, public speaking, I, I might show a speech, and as I did the other day. I, in fact, we showed the the Tony Hawk speech, TED Talk, and I, you know, Tony Hawk, I love that guy. Yeah. You know, oh no, not Tony Hawk. Sorry, sorry, Ethan Hawk. I was thinking skateboarding for a second. Ethan Hawk, not skateboarding guy, but Ethan Hawk, really cool and and you know, really stuck. But the point being, I'm sh so I'm showing this Ethan Hawke talk, and I'm stopping it, and I'm annotating it with my students. I'm saying, okay, I really like what he did here. I really don't like what he did. And then I stop it, and I say, okay, what? so far, we're like one minute, 55 seconds in. What don't you like about the talk? And you know what they didn't like about the talk? So Mr. Hawk, next time you're doing a talk, don't do this. So I'm really thinking about... When you're doing that TED talk, people want you looking at them. They want that eye contact. But so the point, the point to all this is I'm in my class. So if you're in a Zoom, be in the Zoom. I'm in the Zoom. I'm putting in 100%, and that's, that's, that's what matters for me. Be in the Zoom, taking 100%, and also giving your 100% so that we have this great class. I don't, I, I had stand and say, oh, the class is boring. Oh, I don't, it's like, okay, I did my part. What are you brought to the table? And you know, then that's when you get the. Uh, which is my other complaint. And I get it, and I talk about it all the time that, that our students today are at a classic disadvantage. Our students today have a huge, 
huge problem. And that huge, huge problem is the very real fact that they're used to YouTube, they're used to Instagram, they're used to TikTok, they're used to all of these ways of getting information and entertainment that is fast moving, that is, that is going all over the place, that's connected things together, has the soundtrack playing, and, and, it's, it's bite size. So suddenly, Joe Professor James, he's at this huge disadvantage because maybe my lecture isn't like YouTube. And that's where I bring in the student to bring their piece to the table. You're also contributing, and I think that to me became a really big thing this week is you know, everyone is involved in what we're doing. Everyone is creating part of this experience. So do it. <laughs> so literally, I'm doing my part, you're doing your part. And, and honestly, as I'm creating my part, I'm doing everything I can to give you that SpongeBob Avengers Arrow, you know, Ryan Reynolds-esque presentation. I'm not doing the Ethan Hawke. It's a team effort. So that becomes important. Another thing that drives me mad. Putting all this effort in. It's, okay. it's expected, right? That's my job. James, you're going to put all the effort in and we're just going to sit and watch you. Okay. Well, if it's boring, it's not my fault. So today I'm talking in one class. We're talking about ideology. We're talking about representation. It's a little confusing the way I've pulled it together. I'll, to, to be honest, I really condensed it and a couple, an activity that, that I want students to do and it backs up and it goes forward and connecting representation with ideology. Kind of cool, actually. This is a media criticism course. Kind of cool. Great group of students. End of the class, I was trying to say, anyone got a question? Now, I'm, I'm thinking, whew, we've jumped through ideology We've just scratched the surface on multiple ways and things that go into our deconstruction of the representation of an image or an idea. We're not even talking images and ideas. We're just really at this basic core talking media texts, just trying to get them to think about it. So it's a really, really scratching the surface introductory. And I'm asking the students, anyone have a question? Silence. So this, this is something, again, from the professor to you, Ask a question because you know you have it. And, and I say this over and over again. If you've got a question, five other people in that meeting, in that interaction, in that online class are going to have the same question. Ask the question, please. I want the questions. But so often, no one asks the question. So, you know, that's, that's a challenge. Otherwise, how's the week going? Good. You know, I, I, I'm posting up my, my files for my students. I post up the, the recordings, the Zoom recordings for them. I don't edit them. And, you know, there's, there's two, two ways to look at that, right? One way is that, hey, ultimately you're feeding the fuel for a student not to come to your class because they can just watch the video after. They could, but how are they going to ask all the questions that they should be asking? Second... I give quizzes <laughs> if they don't come to class, they get zero. But no, it, it's. I I think the opportunity to grab that information after and and re go you know reprocess it, re listen to it if you need to. But there's a lot of class, so you know it's an hour of investment of your time. Another hour, that's a lot of an investment. Is every student going to go back and listen to that? I doubt it. Would some maybe? Is it a great way to get out of going to class? I suppose for some, they'll, they'll game it, right? And I can't stop anyone from gaming it. But really, you want to be in that class so that you can be part of the conversation as it's happening. And, and I think that makes it, makes it rather interesting. And there, there's pressure, right? Because I've got other faculty members I know who are recording big portions of their lectures, and they've done it once, and they're just doing it again, and they just push play, and then they sit back, and they wait for questions. And, I mean, I guess I could do that. I just feel like it's ripping off the students. And... 
things change and ideas change and things that are going on today might not be the things that went on when I recorded that. So, and I, I want to be fresh and, and I feel that, I mean, that's what I get paid to do, right? So, uh, podcasting this week was good. Had an interesting meeting with a PR agency. I am not going to say who they are or what they're about, but it was really interesting in this meeting with this PR agency who, who have asked me to participate in something that neither of the other two participants turned on their cameras. Hmm. That's exactly what I thought. I thought, hmm, interesting. So I was there looking like me. The other two people didn't turn them on. They were the ones running the meeting. Look, you don't always have to have your camera on, but I think if you're running a meeting, at least turn it on for a second. At least do the person who's participating in that, 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 that respect of, hey, here's me. We haven't met in person. Hi, I've done my hair. I put on whatever it is. Both of them, two of them didn't turn it on. And, you know, look, you might say, does it really matter? James, I've been reading in Forbes that they've said you don't always have to have your camera on and, and whatnot. But think of it as your, your first point of contact. And, and as a communicator, and I'm thinking about interpersonal communication, this is your first point of contact. I would highly recommend to anyone who's making their first point of contact turn on the camera, even if it's only for a couple minutes, just to say, hey, I'm going to turn on, here I am, I'm going to turn it off, gives me better bandwidth, etc. I get it. But that first face-to-face, -face, I think, is really, really important. So that was, that was kind of cool, and I thought that was really interesting coming from uh, a PR agency. Now, look, I don't know how seasoned the people I'm, I was talking to are. Maybe we're, we're talking slightly different generational groups, and, and that idea, you know, they're used to just having audio messages, which could be which is also something else I noticed this week, getting way more people recording audio messages into WhatsApp, which I thought was kind of neat also, because why, why spend all the time writing when you can just f flick on the mic and say, hey, you know, here's what's going on, and then I can listen to it, and, we, and then it's all of, there's, there's a, two layers to that communication, right? You've got the message that you're trying to send, but you've also got your vocal inflection, speed, excitement, it's all included, so I thought that was kind of neat. The other thing, that this week I noticed, I, 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 I picked up my phone actually, and I called someone. I tend to call lots of people. Whether or not they answer is a whole different story because they probably say, oh, James calling again. What does that guy want? But I picked up the phone and, and called someone. They said, you know, you're the only person who calls me. And I thought, oh, that's interesting. And it, it kind of made me think, we spend a lot of time saying, oh, I'm going to send someone a text. I'm going to WhatsApp them. I'm going to send them a voicemail. I'm going to do this. I'm going to drop them an SMS. Does anyone send them SMSs? Does anyone send SMSs anymore? Yeah. But there's something about picking up the phone and saying, hello, how's it going in real time? And, and you know... I know I'm as guilty as the next person that I'll call and then I'll be looking at the clock going, oh, oh, I, I gotta go, gotta go, bye. But, you know, call people once in a while. It's, it's invigorating, actually. It, it, it's, it's a mind blower. It's like, wow, we used to actually talk to people on the phone. We didn't use the images. We didn't use a Zoom. We, we used a phone. So, no, that was kind of interesting. The other, the other thing that, that I noticed this week is Look, I got, and this comes from Brock Chrysler. The number of people who are out there wearing masks that are only over the mouth, not over their nose. So, or the people who've got it on their chin. Wear the mask over the nose, people. Wear the mask over the mouth. Brock Chrysler, those who are wearing their masks over their chin. Brock Chrysler, he says... Wearing a mask on your on on your chin is like wearing a condom on your balls. Food for thought. I want to do another test with you right now. I want you to close your mouth. I want you to put your finger on your nose and I want you to blow out on your hand as hard as you can. <laughs> Did you do it? What are you doing with your hand right now? Because when you blow out through your nose, you notice your hand is quite moist with gunk from your nose. Because folks, believe it or not, not only do you get droplets from your mouth when you talk, droplets from your nose when you breathe and stuff. 
Cover it up, be safe. And remember, you're not wearing a mask for you, you're wearing a mask for me. So, it, really important. I, I think social distancing, mask wearing, hugely important. And I know where, I know, I know, I'm, I'm treading into to rant territory here, but look, I've got as much COVID fatigue as anyone else. We're do, you know, we gotta do what we gotta do. And do your part. Wearing a mask is the simplest thing you can do. What else I learned this week? Soup. I'm still making lots of soups. In fact, I've, I've put in lots of the little pieces and stuff that you get from Japanese soups and the fish balls and stuff. I'm, and I'm, I'm loving that. I make my own bone broth. I encourage everyone to do that. That's kind of great. Kombucha is ready to transfer. I'm a kombucha guy too. Do my, I got my SCOBY hotel. If you're in Dubai, you want to talk about a SCOBY, maybe we can, I can set you up. I, I, I probably got a SCOBY or so I can pass your way. And, and you know, it, there's, uh, that, that's my week so far. I, I, I'm out every morning for a run with the dog, loving it. And, you know, that, that the other side of it is, we, this is really important. We spend a lot of time inside and we're, we're on Skype and we're on Zoom. You know what people aren't doing? Hydration, people! Keep drinking the liquids. And, and it's funny because here we are in, in our homes and we're doing stuff, but so many people aren't thinking about that hydration. And if you sit in front of your Zoom all day and you're not drinking your liter of water, you gotta still get three, four liters of water in you a day. If you don't, you're dehydrated. And then what happens by the end of the day? You're grumpy, you're tired, you're annoyingly aggravated. Why? And you're thinking, what's going on? It's COVID. I'm, I'm, I'm fatigued. It's like, you know what's going on, buddy? You need some water in your system. So make sure you're hydrating. Those are my lessons for today. Hydration. You know, if you're, if you wear your mask properly over your face. Participate in those Zoom conferences. Turn on your camera. Ask questions. Read a syllabus if you're a student. And hey, you know what? I, I, I got lots to share and I'll keep sharing things that are happening in my life and things that are happening in the professor's office. I'm, I'm cognizant of the time because I'm looking at the clock and guess what? I have another class. So it, that's really important. But you want to get in touch, james at thejamescast.com. Professor James, happy to answer any questions you got about anything. If you're a student and you're wondering, hey, you got, a, you got study techniques you recommend? Drop me a line. You're a parent, say, how do I motivate my student who's in the house? Drop me a line. You want to talk juicing? Drop me a line. You want to talk about just anything? Hey, you know what? It's office hours. And happy to have that conversation. Lots more to come. Gonna, you know, podcasts are, are booming. Find those. The James Cast. Google me. Potaholics with a K. Google it. And you can hear what we're doing. Thank you for taking the time to hang out with me. And we'll do it all again soon. On that note... Professor James has to go teach a class. Later.